Good morning. The friends and families of Holy Trinity Catholic Parish, thank you for joining us today for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass can be can be viewed via live stream on the parish's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on KVFT 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The opening hymn will be hymn number 676, A Living Faith. Hymn number 676. Please rise. morning. Let us begin to give praise and thanks to God this morning on this beautiful morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, each of us knows that we're not perfect and we're always in need of God's forgiveness and grace. And so let us pause at this time and reflect on our past week and how we have done in loving our faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, 
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall improvising to the music of the harp. Like David, they devise their own accompaniment. They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet, they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. <coughs> when the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. As he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment 
in these flames? Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. Then he said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh my, some interesting readings we have this morning. First, just a comment on the uh, first reading from the prophet Amos, since the first reading and the gospel sort of go together with a similar theme. The evil of the life of pleasure or complacency is not the self-indulgence itself for Amos, so much as the refusal to notice or care about what has happened to their country and the people in it. As the idle rich have been first in the receiving line of their country's bounty, it is fitting that they be the first to experience deportation and their lifestyle done away with. So, the first reading is saying, you know, be concerned about what is happening to your country and doing something about it. That's the first reading. The gospel. The gospel theme is this. Will the five brothers and readers and the readers are you and I, that's us. Will the five brothers and the readers follow the example of the rich man or he, Jesus, is teaching about care of the needy like Lazarus? If the brothers and we, the readers, do not follow Jesus' teaching, we will not have a place in heaven. The slow-witted rich man in the gospel shows that the rich man's failure to care for Lazarus was not in accord with what the Old Testament teaches, nor Jesus' teaching in the gospel. The rich man did not produce the deeds of loving kindness that would have signified repentance from self-centeredness and a callous way of life. He was just callous to the Lazarus, the poor man, just walked past him every day, didn't care. 
didn't even probably notice him even after a while. What we also see in the gospel is the reversal in the next life of the conditions one had in the present life. Lazarus, now in the bliss of heaven, and the rich man suffering in hell. But note, the poor in the person of Lazarus, even though Lazarus sees the rich man there suffering in the flames, the poor, they do not gloat over the punishment of the rich. Did you notice how that was absent? It's not there. And what the gospel also teaches is the faked ignorance and hardness of heart does not diminish, but rather increases the voluntariness of sin. So the rich man couldn't plead ignorance and say, oh, well, you know, God, I really didn't know. I wasn't aware that I was supposed to help Lazarus. That fake excuse before God doesn't work. The poor, too, will need to respond to the gospel of Jesus. So it's not just the rich man in this gospel who needs to respond to the gospel and to Jesus' teaching and scripture's teaching, but the poor as well. Everybody has to and needs to respond to Jesus. The drama of hunger in the world calls people of faith who pray to exercise responsibility toward their brethren, both in personal behavior and in their solidarity with the human family. And this is borne out in the prayer and the petition that we say at every Mass and when you say the Rosary, in the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Do we notice that? Do we pay attention to that aspect of the Our Father? And finally, the Gospel speaks and teaches of a final destiny of the soul, a destiny which can be different for some than for others. In other words, to make it more plain, not everybody goes to heaven at the end of their life. Death puts an end to human life as the time that is open for us to either accept or reject the divine grace or in the gospel message shown to us in Christ. This is our time to accept or to reject the gospel message. Once we die, there's no more choice. We can't change our minds. It's done. Each will be rewarded immediately after death in accordance with the works, with accordance with our works and faith. So, you know, when you take a look at that gospel this morning, about Lazarus and the rich man, and you look at both of their lives here in that gospel, there's a lot there given to us to think about. And maybe we should ask the question, am I more like the rich man, or am I more like Lazarus? 
what is my choice? Please stand for the prayers of the faithful or the creed. We have heard God's word in scripture this morning and we have explored scripture and its meaning. And so now let us together profess faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before our loving and compassionate God, who knows our joys, our hopes, and fears. For church leaders, may the Lord bless them in their humble service of love for God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in seeking justice and truth in all of their actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from lack of adequate housing, food, or educational opportunities, may the Lord bless them with the help and support they need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord renew and deepen our faith and lead us in greater service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, particularly those who have no one else to pray for them, may they be welcomed into the heavenly Jerusalem. And for the intentions of this Mass, Amelia Lentz, Jim Keen, Carol Zebeck and Jim Beam, Paul Van Teicher, all members of the Edward and Bernice Albrecht family, our parish family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold silently in our hearts,
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts a desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious as we entrust to your care all who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of preparation will be hymn number 747, God your knowing I can see, hymn number 747. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through its wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering 
canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph her, the apostles and with all the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Remember your word to your servant, O Lord, by which you have given me hope. This is my The communion hymn will be hymn number 584, Christ Be Our Light, number 584. Many the gifts, many 
Just uh, some announcements uh, this morning. Um, at, this morning, Jen Hess will be speaking um, on women walking with, pur with uh, purpose. So she'll say and share a few words with you on that. Um, and then, if you have not had the, a chance to return your stewardship of ministry form, there are extra cards at both entrances along with a basket to put them in. The spaghetti dinner sign up is in the narthex for volunteers as well as for donating dessert. You can also go to the parish website to sign up. The dinner this year is on Sunday, October 16th. And now, Jen. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jennifer Hess, and today I wanted to talk to you about two things that my parents told me growing up that I probably should have listened to a little bit more. The first thing was, if you let the devil ride, sooner or later he'll want to drive. But I'm going to spare you everything that I did that I probably should have listened to that one a little bit more today. Um, it was the other one that they said, and that was words that they wrote in my Bible on the day that they I got baptized in high school, and that was, um, please read these words in building a relationship with Christ. He will always open doors where you think there were none. So I'm here today to reach out to every lady in today's world. We, as Catholic women, sometimes find it hard to find the time in our daily grind to grow that relationship with Christ, or even have the time to try and listen to his message. If you've never done a Bible study before, or you've done many, it really doesn't matter because our Bible study coming up is perfect for every woman. We get through the day and say, tomorrow I'll do better to grow my relationship with Christ. It took me 14 years of tomorrows before signing up with For Walking With Purpose. This Bible study is applicable to daily life and takes scripture from the head to the heart. We meet as small groups at various times so you can find a time that's most convenient for you. It's only a six week study in the fall and it begins soon. So please consider signing up this week. There's more built information in the bulletin or stop at the table in the narthex. Sign up only takes a few minutes or if you're on the run, you can use the QR code. I've participated in the last two Walking with Purpose, so I can attest that the small groups are of fellow Catholic women who share your stress, share the tiredness we all feel at times, and also share the doubt that sometimes creeps into our minds. But more importantly, we share the desire to grow that relationship with Christ. The words that my parents didn't write in that Bible will that although Christ opens those doors, we have to walk through them. So please, I hope you consider taking this opportunity to grow in your relationship with Christ and learn to how to rely more on the Holy Spirit. So please join us this fall with Walking with Purpose. Thank you. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Go forth, the mass is ended. The closing hymn will be hymn number 707. I heard the voice of Jesus say, hymn number 707. i uh-huh. 